Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm the gerbil. Duh. I mean, you're on my channel, right? Anyway, so I, uh, I, I normally don't do videos like this one. This is uh, like a what I wish I had known when I started Swaga. Uh, th this, this video, actually, I really hope to have some really excellent advice in here. So I hope you stick around. I hope it's helpful, but especially for the newer, new-ish players. And by that, I mean like if you're in your first six months, maybe even first year of the game, then you probably are my primary audience for this video. But of course, as somebody who, with an 11 million GP account who's been playing it for over six years, I am surely gonna say something to help everybody. And this, this video comes from a place of introspective uh, exploration lately. I've been going through an incredibly difficult period and actually was um, gonna honestly quit my channel. Yeah, bomb right there, huh? I, I was actually planning to quit my channel and I was thinking about quitting the game. Um, but my wife was like, nah, dude, keep going. You enjoy it. And I think she's right. She, I don't think she's right. She is right. So um, I thought, well, then let's take this introspective and let's explore things that I think may help other Swaga players out there like you and, and you and over there, you and you. Yeah, you know who you are. So let's get to it, shall we? All right. Um, as always, folks, hey, if, if any of this video is something you enjoy, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, please. Uh, I'm not going to say that it's going to, like, you know, make a profound impact or anything, but it's the easiest way you can support me and this channel and show some love, and I appreciate it. All right, let's do it. So, first thing, gameplay diversity. So, when I started Swaga, um, I don't remember, maybe I was, like, level 40, 45, when I started wondering, is this all that it is? You know, team A standing next to team B, taking turns, whack, your turn, whack, your turn, whack, right? Back and forth, you know, and, and I was kind of like really surprised by that. Uh, I thought that as I unlocked each of the different game modes, that there would be more and more diversity coming to this game. And yet fundamentally, it's all the same. Whether you're playing 5v5, 3v3, Conquest Challenges, GAC, TB, TW, Epic Conquest, Galactic Chase, Legendary Journey, Arena, Fleet Arena, and on and on and on. I ran out of names there. It is absolutely astonishing how many different game modes there are, and yet they are all fundamentally the same. Um, that's not likely to change. I, even the raids, right? The new speeder bike raid, it is still fundamentally the same. You've got your two or three characters. They're the bad guy characters. You take a turn. Wow, look at that bubble balloons. I keep forgetting to turn that off. And I don't mean this to be a rant. This is not a rant. What this is, is to be aware that this game is not about the next level. It is not about the next uh, phase or the next castle or, you know, your princess is not in this castle, Mario, or whatever. Um, it's all essentially the same thing. So what is this game? It is, and, and I'm going to say this again in a moment, Star Wars Galaxy Heroes is a resource management, economics, <laughs> uh, and collecting game. It, that's it. It really is a game where we collect characters from the Star Wars universe and we play them in a variety of matchups as entertainment. That's it. Boys and girls, that, that is the entirety of this game in a nutshell. Now, had I known that when I started playing this game, I, I would not have played it. So I don't mean that to be a bad thing, because it's not. It's, in a, it's a very entertaining game, I think. But I think it's something that could be more clear. All right, let's get into some more important stuff. All right, so sorry, Kenobi does lose that battle if you were into it. Fun versus progression. Now, this is this is like the big debate in the community. Is it better to have fun or is it better to advance or can they be the same thing? Well, I wholly believe they can be the same thing, actually. But first and foremost, I got a list over here on the, the, the left, uh, my left, whatever that is in your screen. And you can see that, number one, I said this is a game in all capital levels letters. It is a game. And and I think that 
all too often, it's easy to lose sight of that because a lot of us, like I hear people say it's a hobby. Folks, this is not a hobby, all right? Th this is not a hobby. I, I don't care, folks, a game is not a hobby. Um, being a gamer can be a hobby, but that's a whole different thing, right? This is a game and games are meant to be fun in my humble opinion. There is no real such thing as progression in this game if you view it in the context of, right, like Super Mario Brothers original, I'm gonna go old school here, right, level 1-1, 1-2, 1-3, 1-4, and then hoorah! You know, you beat the little mini Bowser boss and you go on to level 2-1. That does not exist here. There are levels that you progress your, your character from level 0 one through 85 and unlock different things along the way like GAC and fleets and whatnot. But after that, progression then becomes whatever you set your sights on. So I see on Reddit people all will, will say like, will this pack help me advance? Or what team will get me the farthest? Folks, there is no farthest. And that's also because there is no such thing truly as an inline. As long as the game is making money, and as long as Star Wars is a popular franchise, Capital Games is going to keep adding new characters, new events, and new ways to spend your time, energy, and money. And that is absolutely perfectly fine. That is capitalism at its finest. They build something and give it to us, we give them money in exchange, everybody's happy. And that's the way it should be. That is. That's great. That's wonderful. But progression is a complete miss construct in this in this game there is no serious progression if you believe that unlocking Revan is going to help you then unlock Jedi Master Luke or whatever that's gonna or Jedi Knight Luke that's gonna get you Jedi Master Luke and that's gonna suddenly beat the game nope sorry doesn't work that way and I'm gonna talk more about this in the coming slides as well but progression is actually something you should kind of like drop from your your expectations and vocabulary when talking about swaga it should be much more along the lines of what will help me achieve this goal in this road path and that should be asked with the understanding that that goal over there and that other goal up there and the goal behind me and the goal right over there are all potentially of equal value and significance in this game so you you have an account with 5 million gp and you don't have job of the hut that's okay you don't need Jabba the Hutt. You just aren't going to have the, the rewards from this event. And you're like, well, I don't have Slicker either. Well, that's fine. You don't need Slicker. You just won't get this particular event accomplished, right? The game is... Uh, let, let's move on. I'm going to come back to this. Last point is the game is really addictive. There, If you are of an obsessive compulsive personality as I am... And if you are one of those people that once you start a collection, it is all but impossible to let go of it. Uh, this game may be detrimental to you. <laughs> and I, again, I don't, I don't mean this to be a rant or a complaint. It's not. It, it, it's a reality that like for me, when I scroll through my roster, oh my gosh, anytime I see a green plus, it's like a trigger. It's like, why is that not applied? But as I said, it's not about strategy. It's about resource management. It's about learning when to push that green plus to apply gear and when not to. So yeah, it's addictive. Just watch out. Player versus environment versus player versus player. These are the two authentically modes of the game. We, we say game mode in all kinds of different constructs that are all actually, they're not different game modes. Again, this speeder bike raid right here is fundamentally no different than the Crate Dragon raid was, fundamentally no different than the Heroic Sith Triumvirate, fundamentally no different than the, the tank takedown, and fundamentally no different than the pit raid. It really isn't. It is still the same turn-based limited action I shoot, you shoot, they shoot, whatever. We take turns, right? It, it, it's the same thing. It is. It's it's just all wrapped up in a different package. So, so player versus the computer versus player versus player is really the only two constructs this game has. And it's important to understand that they are actually very different in their potential outcomes. And this is not really explored or, or 
shared explicitly in any way in this game. But player versus environment is going to provide you with a variety of different resources to upgrade your characters. But they honestly pale in comparison to player versus player. What do I mean by that? A bunch of different events are essential, like getting Tarkin's fleet up and running so that you can get Zetas for your fleet uh, for your characters. You gotta get those Zetas. But there are other ways to get Zetas. I'm not saying you should ignore that. Do not ignore that. Like there are some things you should not sleep on. You gotta get the weekly challenges or whatever they're called to get your Zetas. The point is though, after a year or two years, you do start to wind up with an abundance of the resources that the player versus environment will give you. And that abundance is only gonna do so much for you. The player versus player, which is gonna include arena, fleet arena, grand arena, territory wars, um, those are the places that are gonna give you the rewards with the most versatility, i.e. crystals. Because you can use crystals to buy anything you need in this game. So if you miss out on an assault battle, that's okay. It's it's a bummer, but you don't need to feel any sorrow, pain, or stress about not completing it. If you're able to get your crystal payout top 10, ideally top one in your fleet arena every day, you will way overcompensate for that, right? Player versus player is far more important. With that said, there are players, or a lot of them, who hate the PvP experience. They don't want to play against other players. They prefer the PvE. So just be aware that PvE is going to get you an abundance of resources, though limited in diversity and value eventually. Again, there's caveats to all of this. I, I know I can feel people already writing in the comments down below. Yeah, but you, the assault battles give you Chirotech. Yeah, they do which you can also buy with crystals and guild currency and, 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 right? There's, there are so many ways to get everything that you can get through PVE. There really is. I mean, unless I'm like totally brain dead and missing something. And if I am, let me know in the content in the comments down below. But so how do you excel in PVP? If I'm saying that's really, really good stuff is you, you, you gotta join SWGOH.GG and you gotta watch YouTube videos like you're doing now. And you don't, you don't have to watch me, honestly. I appreciate that you do. I really love that you do. I hope that you do like and subscribe. But there are many, many content creators out there. Speaking of content creators, I probably should have opened with this one because this is, this is really, really important. The number one way to improve in this game, to advance, to progress as if there really is such a thing is to learn from other people's mistakes and get advice right join an active community a guild that that is probably number one if your guild is silent and nobody's talking right you are missing out on collaborative efforts like territory battles territory wars you are missing out on player versus player immediate support I cannot tell you how many times I have been in a GAC battle and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have no idea how to beat this, this battle right here. SWGOH.GG says do this, but I don't have those resources or I already used gas over here. I already used my counters over here. What, what do I do? And overwhelmingly, my guild is supportive and they're like, hey, bro, here's what you do. This worked for me. Here's how you mod, right? And that results in wins. Not always, of course, but that guild communication, that guild support, that team effort to get your territory battles, uh, stars and rewards to get your territory war victories is essential for developing your roster of characters. Watch YouTube videos. And, and again, I love that you're watching me, but different players, different creators have different approaches to things, have different strategies and tend to focus on different aspects of the game. Scribe is fantastic for galactic challenges, as is Bit Dynasty. Arnold is like all over the place, a general resource for everything, right? Nooch Too Good is the same way. He's everywhere. It's amazing. I tend to focus on really, really niche things like Jawas and Ewoks and whatever I love. Also fleets and the raid. I love raids, right? Uh, if you want to know about Conquest, check out Celiac Sarah, right? But the point is there are wonderful, supportive people out there. 
SWGOH.gg is an essential. It is an absolute must. It is an absolute must. It 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 has a free and paid tiers. Um, I find that there are a lot of flaws in its data because it is crowdsourced, and crowdsourced can be self-sustaining in inaccuracies. Right once the dominant crowd opinion becomes let's say opinion a and then newbies come and say hey crowd what do you what's what what should we do and they're like a a a even if it's the wrong opinion they buy into it because why not that's what everyone else is doing right so they jump off a bridge let's all jump off the bridge suddenly you apply strategy a you become part of that collective crowd whether you knew it or not encouraging the next new person to come along and you have a self-sustaining error this happens a lot. We see this in AIs, generative AIs. We see this in all kinds of crowdsourced material. Not anti-crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing is brilliantly effective in a lot of ways. I'm just saying be aware. Um, and then get on Discord. If you're not on Discord and you're playing Swaga, you are causing yourself undue pain and loss in time. And again, I'm not telling you to chase the meta. I'm not telling you to go chase the shiny. I'm not telling you to advance or progress in any way. What I'm saying is it's a collecting game. If you want to collect more characters faster, get the advice from other people who know what they're doing. Also with all that, don't take any one person's word as the gold standard. Not mine, not Arnold's, not anyone's. I can't tell you how many times I have watched a video where somebody does something like what I'm showing you right now with Ewoks beating Jedi Master Luke GL and they're telling you this is the way or they're even just excited about it and they're sharing their accomplishment and you walk away from that video thinking wow that was amazing I'm going to dump a bunch of resources time and energy into building that only to discover it doesn't work. Why does it not work? Because mods, datacrons, experience, turn order, right? There are so many reasons that you can watch a YouTube channel, watch a video, see what they do, and fail utterly over and over and over again to repeat it. And as a content creator, I try to be aware of that, but I lose sight of that often. I do, everybody does, it's human nature. When I make an Ewok video, I get excited. When I make a, a Galactic Legend Unlock video, I get excited. And I try to, and I, and I more and more am becoming more cognizant that my advice may not be yours. Your The mileage you receive from any YouTube video is gonna vary based again on mods, datacron, experience, turn order, blah, 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 take your pick, right? So like I recently went back to my, my Galactic Legend Leia tier four unlock video. I thought it was the easiest tier ever. I thought it was so easy. I took the mods off my Leia. I took the mods off, no mods, and went in and utterly destroyed the event, beat it like six or seven times in a row. And then I started getting lots and lots and lots of people commenting, that it's absolutely wrong, my advice is wrong, blah, blah, blah. And, and I went back and I changed the title of the video to warning, my advice may be wrong. Because I recognize that something I'm doing either isn't coming across clearly in my own video or my experience is unique. Could have been just absolute RNG in my favor. The game could have even been updated, right? This happens, updates happen. And content creators, we do not have the time to go back and modify years of past videos over hundreds of different events, teams, strategies, whatever, to stay relevant. So get on Discord, talk to your guilds, get advice from multiple sources, right? This is my, my teacher, true teacher moment here. All right, final one, myths about the game. Oh my goodness, are there a few. Remember what I said, there is no progression, there is no getting ahead, there is no catching up for the most part. People ask me on Reddit, oh geez, it's the number one question all the time on Reddit. Will this bundle help me catch up? Should I start a new account? Can I catch up? You know what, catching up is a complete misnomer as well. It, it GAC is currently broken. There are, there are people in the lowest tiers of GAC with 10 million GP accounts. The number one or the top five accounts I think of the game are currently not supposed to be there. They're like 4 million GP. GAC is broken. Nothing you do instantly is going to elevate you into a higher tier of GAC, except for maybe hyperdrive 
bundle, hyper uh, light speed bundles to get those GL characters super super quick. Um, not GLs, of course. You know what I mean, like the all the first order and resistance characters to enable you to get a GL ray or slicker quickly. But even then, you're gonna hit stone walls like that in GAC, right? It, it's gonna happen. So, should you buy the hyperdrive bundle? Well, it depends on what you like to do. It'll shave off three to five months, maybe six months of gameplay experience. If you don't want to wait, do it. If you got the money to spend, spend it. But you should understand that every single pack in this game is designed to generate revenue from capital games, not to push you ahead in the game, right? So like right here on the screen, I'm buying this bundle. Now you can't see what it is. I buy it twice, 20 bucks, boom. It's gonna give me 25 shards of Keller and Beck. Is that good? Um, no, it's laughably awful because I need 330 shards to unlock him at seven stars. Then I need the gear to get him up to 12. Then I need the relics to go to seven. And I need the Omegas and Zetas for his abilities. Plus I need six dot gold mods, right? It's ludicrous, but yeah, it's reasonably worth it to me based on my gameplay, right? I got some Kyrotex there, 25 prods, 25 computers. I got 25 shards of Paz, 25 shards of IG-12, 25 shards of Beck, who's the only character I want right now. It is an absolute waste of money in, in reality, but I have the disposable income. It's This is my hobby, which is not a hobby. It's my entertainment. It is my source of entertainment. Therefore, I don't mind spending it. But no bundle in this game, no pack. You can buy every pack in the store every single day. You will not break into Kyber 1 unless you also know how to play the game effectively. Know how to manage your teams. Know the right speeds to put on your characters, the right mods to put on your characters. You must interact with all your, your friends and allies and guildmates in the community. It ain't going to get you caught up otherwise. So don't spend unless you want an incremental boost to incremental characters in a game with over 260 characters. Right? I know that sounds kind of dark, but it's the reality of this. And that's the way it works. So if you don't mind spending, spend! Right? If it's your, if it's your entertainment, if it's your joy, if this game brings you joy, if you're chasing them fun and you play the game for 20 minutes and you enjoyed that, Spend away, but don't do it believing you're going to get caught ahead, <clears throat> caught up. On that same approach, don't chase the meta unless you like the meta. Because again, it doesn't matter. I can beat Galactic Legends, four of them, consistently with my Ewoks. Can you do that? Probably not. Can you beat a Galactic Legend with, I don't know, Starkiller? Probably. Can I? Usually not. My Star Killer team fails almost always to Ray. It drives me nuts. Everyone else does it. Your mileage may vary. So your efforts are going to be different. Your successes are going to be different depending on all those factors we talked about before, right? So my advice is chase the fun. Chase what makes you happy. Chase what puts you into a, a good mood. A, get a smile on your face. And if that coincides with the meta, then wow, power to you, awesome. But that should be your primary goal, right? Um, kind of touched on a bunch of these, like item uh, number four, your guild is not always right. Number five, YouTube is not always right. I've given bad advice in, in the past. I've given misleading advice unintentionally. Every content creator is gonna do that by accident because we all have different experiences. Your guildmates are gonna have the same situation. Your guildmates, they are they are a great resource to go to, but again, don't believe one person is the definitive source. Your guildmate can be like, cha bro, here's a video of me just destroying. And you go in there and you're like, yeah, I got destroyed, right? It's gonna happen. Because unless, again, you take the time to learn that turn order, to learn that strategy, to learn which special to push at which time, which sequence. Do you do special two or special one? Do you do special two on the leader or do you do special two on the tank or on the attacker, right? Who do you call to assist? Is it this one or that one? There is so much to consider that until you've played it out 30, 40 times, you, you may not get it right, right? So myths are that you can go watch a video you can download this you can watch 
the Swaga. You can look at the map of the win rates and you will win. No, I have lost countless battles that on SWGOH.GG say 100% win rate. And that's because the data is not publicly always accurate. If you actually have their paid tier, you can go in and you can see a whole lot more information, like specifically what data crons apply. With this data cron, here's the win rate. With this mod set, here's the win rate. With that mod set, here's the win rate. I do not have a paid account. I just know my guild leader shares it all the time. And I'm like, dude, that's awesome. But like, seriously, I've gone in, I have seen it say 100% win rate. I have battled and lost miserably right so be aware finally this last point number seven quitting the game is okay i am not advocating you to quit the game unless it does not bring you joy if this game brings you no joy if you are not happy in it if you play it and feel you wasted your time by all means quit your guild is not going to hate you for it your friends are not going to hold it against you I have had conversation after conversation with people who are like, yeah, I'm thinking about quitting the game. I don't know. And I'm like, well, do, do you enjoy it? And they're like, yeah, not really. But I put so much time into it. That's called a sunk cost or the gambler's fallacy, I think is also the one. Like the more you put into it, the more you should continue to put into it. No. If you're not enjoying it, move on. Take the time you have in front of you and get the most out of it. Don't look at the time that's already passed and think you are dedicated or forced into continuing that action. Anyway, folks, a lot of introspection here. Um, I really have been in a, in a bad place lately. So uh, I hope that my thinking of my life's issues and then relating it to the game here helps give you a little bit of clarification or guidance or advice maybe going forward. But ultimately, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy Star Wars Galaxy Heroes, and I'll see you all on the hall tables. All right, take care. Bye-bye.